Hi there. Today I'm going to show you how to get your site up and running in minutes with WebMatrix, a free tool from Microsoft to help you create, customize, and publish your website from start to finish. First, I'm going to start with a machine without WebMatrix so I can show you how quick and easy it is to download. I'm going to go to my blog at bit.ly slash lsrp. And at the top of my blog, you'll see a link to install WebMatrix. I'm going to try the latest beta so I can show you some cool features such as IntelliSense or automatic code completion. I'm going to click on Download WebMatrix 2 Beta Now and allow the Web Platform Installer to install WebMatrix. As you can see, it's only a little over 7 megs, so it should be a pretty quick installation process. Now that I've successfully installed WebMatrix 2 Beta, I'm going to launch it. When you launch WebMatrix, you can see that you can open a site that you've created in WebMatrix, you can open a site from a folder, or you can open a site from a remote location. If you don't want to start from a template or start from scratch, you can also choose a site from a web gallery. As you can see, the sites are sorted by the number of downloads. You can filter by blogs, content management systems, e-commerce sites, forums, galleries, tools, and wikis, depending on what kind of site you want to build. If you want to create a site from a template, you can either start from an empty site or one of the templates available. Let's say I want to start a photo gallery site, and I'm going to call this Alice Loves Photos. Click OK, and it's going to create a site from a template. So looking at the web matrix dashboard, you can see the local URL, the path, my site files, my databases, and reports where I can run reports for things such as broken hyperlinks. When I run the site, I can run it with available browsers on my computer. So let's try running it in IE9. As you can see, it's running locally on IS Express. When you right click on the IS Express tray icon, you can see your sites that are running locally. When I create a login account, I can see it added instantly to the database. As you can see, this template also includes CAPTCHA verification. All you have to do is go to your register.cshtml file and uncomment out the code that's included and modify with your private key and public key. So once I've registered, I can look under databases and under user profiles, and I can see that my new user profile has been added. ASP.NET Razor syntax makes it easy to mix HTML and code. Because I have a CS HTML extension on this file in this template, I am mixing C Sharp and HTML. Razor syntax uses the at character. It's really easy to inject sections or pages or bodies where you need them. For example, if I wanted to create a separate page footer, all I have to do is create a new file, that's a .cshtml, and then I'm going to take out the current page footer, which, as you recall, the old page footer had the year and photo gallery written under it. I'm going to take out this code and use razor syntax to call my new page footer. At render page, page footer dot cshtml. Now I can go to my new page footer and I'm going to modify the old one to say Alice's very cool photo gallery. Save it and then run it. 
now you can see my new page footer on every page. Now let's say I wanted to add a Twitter helper. Let's see how easy it is to do that with the NuGet gallery. I'm going to add Twitter helper from the NuGet gallery. Install and accept the end user license agreement. As you can see, under app data packages, the Twitter helper package has been added. But what if I don't really know how to use the Twitter helper, or what if I don't really know what I can do with it? Well, here's where Razor Syntax and IntelliSense come to the rescue. So I'm going to use my Razor Syntax at Twitter dot, and then IntelliSense kicks in gives me a list of options and let's say that I want to add a follow button but I'm not really sure what the arguments are so IntelliSense kicks in again tells me that I need to put a string for my username so I'm going to add AliceRP so now I see a follow me on Twitter button and when I click on it you'll see that it redirects to my Twitter page so right now, all of this is still running locally. You can tell by the IS Express trait icon and the URL. So now that we're ready to publish the site, you can see that you can use either the file transfer protocol or the web deploy options. If you don't have a hosting provider, WebMatrix can actually help you find web hosting through partners. Since I happen to have a .NET host account, I'm going to go to my control panel for .NET host. .NET Host supports web deploy and makes it easy to publish your web matrix sites. I'm going to go to Web, Websites, so I can get all my published settings from my control panel or with .NET Host.com. I can actually simply go to Web Publishing and download my publishing profile for this website. By saving it somewhere convenient, I can just access it when I need to import my published settings. So I'm going to save it on my desktop go back to web matrix rather than entering all my settings manually I'm going to simply import my published settings in my desktop I can see where I saved my alicerp.com published settings I can validate a connection and save the settings now web matrix will test the published compatibility at which point I can continue to publish my site So once publishing is complete, when I go to alicerp.com, I can see my photo gallery site with the very cool photo gallery footer and my Twitter button. So there you have it. I've created, customized, and published a site from start to finish in a matter of minutes. Now you can try it too.